So, Motoe has finally returned to our screens after a long, long delay from the coronavirus pandemic. We had a fantastic return to action at Jerez at the weekend with the very first race of the new Moto E World Cup. Uh, I am Lewis Duncan and joining me is Michaela Cerruti to discuss what we saw on Sunday at Jerez. Uh, Michaela, welcome. How are we? Thank you. Thank you. I'm very well. And you? Yes, very well. Thank you. Glad that the, the motorcycle racing is back. Yeah, um, it was yeah. a long wait, wasn't yeah. it? Very, very long wait, but it was worth it, I would I would say. Um, of course, uh, all the talking points and headlines have been dominated by what happened in MotoGP, but at the start of Sunday, we had the first uh, race of the 2020 NL Moto E World Cup, second season uh, for the class, and uh, not too many changes in terms of bike specification, but the, the Energica Ego bike, some more torque, at the lower range, so that's increased lap times a little bit and made things that looked a little bit tricky. We saw a couple of mistakes in the race. Uh, we saw a big mistake in qualifying for, for Nicolo Canapa. Uh, so it still seems these bikes are very, very tricky to get for the riders to get their head around. Yes, I think that now the motorbikes, they have a little bit more efficiency with the cooling system. With in electric engines in general, it's very important to have performance and allows drivers to, uh, let's say, push a little bit more without the problem of the engine losing uh, performance. Also because it was a very hot weekend, Spain is very hot all the time and Jerez in particular. So um, I think that the motorbikes this year, they are more efficient from that point of view. Of course, what I could see uh, in qualifying, but even during the race, of course, is that they are very delicate uh, because the problem of these motorbikes still is the weight. They are much heavier than Moto3 and, uh, and Moto2 uh, because the battery is very heavy. This is a problem in motorbikes, in electric motorbikes and electric cars as well. <laughs> That's uh, a point in common. And so it's very easy to make mistakes. So uh, it's quite entertaining, let's say, to see qualifying and to see the, the riders fighting between each other because it's very easy to, uh, to make mistakes. And... Um, uh, I think there were a uh, few special uh, e-pole laps uh, where you could really see what's the right driving style, uh, like drawing the lines uh, around a wonderful track like Heretz is. Mm, indeed. Uh, and in the race, we saw a dominant performance for Eric Granado. Uh, and, you know, it's... We've we've generally seen quite close races in Moto E, but this was from the off Granado nailed his launch, and from the first lap, no one could catch him. There was a little mistake early on for Matteo Ferrari, the champion, uh, and that allowed Granado to escape. But even then, he was he just didn't put a foot wrong. The lines were perfect. The lap times were perfect. You know, very very strong start to Granado's campaign. Yes, as strong as his end of last year, we can say. So he's showing that he's for sure the man to beat uh, this year. And he was very good at the very start because he had a very good start and he could put a gap between him and all the, all the group so that he didn't need to fight. And with this kind of motorbikes, already with any kind of motorbikes, is once that you have to fight, of course, you get a little bit slower and you, um, you use the tire more. So he was very good to have this start and and have this race basically alone, <laughs> very, very quick. He was even quicker than qualifying, so his pace was absolutely unreachable for uh, anyone else. And Matteo Ferrari, as you said, uh, the reigning champion of, of Moto E, he made a mistake straight away uh, during the first lap, and so he was forced uh, to fight after that. I think he, was, he had a very good performance to, to get back to P2. And I think that that was a very good start of the of the season. We can plan to have very very nice fights to watch in the in the following races. Yeah, I agree. I mean, for Granado, it was good to see that uh, him come out the block straight away because last season it was some sort of average results to start the season. But as you mentioned, he got good towards the end of it. Uh, up there. Behind uh, Granado and, and Ferrari, we had a, a Moto E rookie. We had Dominic Egeter, of course, 
Grand Prix winner in the Moto2 class. Difficult couple of years for Domi uh, in the Grand Prix categories, but he's he seemed to have found his, his, his flow again uh, on the Moto E bike. It was a good race for, for Egeta. Yes, yes, it was a very good race. Uh, new to this series, uh, I think that it's also nice to see new drivers coming in. Uh, Moto E is also an excellent chance for riders to be still in the Moto MotoGP environment. So top teams, top managers, uh, top riders. Um, you are on TV. Uh, I think that NLX in this in this way is giving really uh, a good chance of electric mobility to um, to be in motorsport and to allow riders to have other and drivers also to have other chance of racing a bit less traditional uh, let's say but someone like Egerte who was missing results in the past years in other series now he's showing that he can be uh, very quick with Moto E um, Moto E as I was saying before needs a special driving style so maybe a rider that was having no results or special results in other series, it can show that his driving style is maybe um, better for this kind of uh, for this kind of uh, motorbikes because you need to be very gentle uh, to respect the weight of the bike. Uh, let's say that to be 100% performing, probably you need to drive at your 80%, which is something very difficult to do. Uh, you don't only need your aggressivity and your instinct, but to drive these motorbikes, you really need your head as well, which I tell you is not something that you can generally see. <laughs> Overall, when they put their helmets on, you know, and the veins get a little bit tighter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah, especially in a six lap race where it's it's all or nothing, you know, there's no time to see how the pace is. You, it's it's great guns from the start uh, and we saw that in the latter stages Egeter got in the mix there with the likes of Tulevich as well Lucas Tulevich another rookie to the class uh, he was running in the podium places until late on he made a, a small mistake as well uh, in fighting uh, in that group but again really impressive from the rookie riders we we saw on Sunday it's like you say it seems to riders who struggled in past series like Tulevich did in Moto2 uh, they come to this bike and they just seem to be able to naturally ride it. Yeah, I love the e pull up from Tulovic, for example. I think that even even though Granado um, gained the, 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 the e pole position, uh, I think one of the best laps was from uh, Tulovic. It was so gentle, so smooth, but in the meantime, it was really, really, really quick. I think that was um the the best example of what this driving style uh needs to be so i think that in the race yes he made a few mistakes and unfortunately there is no not much time to recover in in six laps uh because the race is really quick but uh i'm sure we need to watch this guy through all the season because he knows how to drive this motorbike yeah, for sure, I agree with that. Another one as well to watch for, I thought, was Jordi Torres. Uh, made a very late decision to quit his World Superbike ride for this year with the MIE Honda squad to focus on Moto E because there was quite a lot of clashes between Moto E and, and, and Superbikes. So I think, um, if anything, that's a great showing of how riders see Moto E. They see it as a very serious championship. They see it as one that is worth focusing their efforts on because let's not forget World Superbikes is a great championship but it's a very uh, great endorsement for Moto E wouldn't you say? Yes of course uh, you know Torres is an example of a rider having a lot of experience in uh, in other series and you know this championship is now made of uh, legends let's say but not only that you know at the beginning it looked like that was a place where only uh, past drivers could come and show again uh, something more about them but now is a, is a very good mix of that and is a good chance to show uh, what they can do and overall to show something that maybe we didn't see in their past careers because again it's something different and uh, it's a completely different way of racing when you have six laps you know you have one lap during qualifying and you have six laps during the race which I think that from the um, audience point of view uh, is very good because they can you can keep the focus alive of, uh, of people and I think that also for riders you know the chance to have their own lap 
uh, during qualify where they are all watching you. Um, it's something that on the other side puts a lot of pressure uh, on the riders, both on the e-lap and both on the um, during the race itself. So I think it's a chance to show something different from the other series, also from the dry rider's point of view. Yeah, definitely. And we saw how that pressure can affect riders, even very experienced riders. Alex DeAngelis jumped yeah. start and he was hit with a, a double long lap penalty. So it, it shows you just how, you know, no matter how much experience you've got, this championship is so close and all the guys know that. They know they cannot make one mistake or it's it's game over for their race. Yes, it's uh, it's very difficult and uh, he was struggling a little bit in uh, in the free practice already, Alex, because he, he was not finding the right setup for uh, for his bike. So he did a lot of work with the Beastine guys to find uh, another setup to um, to make the qualifying. So imagine you get there, you don't even know what's what's on your wheels, on your two wheels, because you cannot be sure whether you made the, the right choice or not. You're doing that out lap, hoping with finger crossed that what you thought was the right thing to do uh, setup wise. So I think that in, in qualifying, he did a pretty good lap. For sure, he made few mistakes. He was forcing too much. You could see probably his uh, rear tires smoking <laughs> and sliding a little bit too much. And, and yes, so I think that he could have a better race, but with the jump start and the penalty, the double penalty lap, uh, completely destroyed uh, the race. So I hope next time he will be more lucky. Yeah, and this is a good thing, is if you had a bad race this week, we have a race straight away this weekend at the same circuit. Um, so let's just look ahead to that briefly. Um, it's hard to look past Granado, but, you know, the guys like Egeter, like um, Chulovic, the rookies, they've had one weekend of experience on the bike, so you have to expect that they will be much closer to, to Granado uh, this coming weekend. Yes, I think so. And I'm really looking forward to seeing, for example, Canepa, uh, who, for, who fortunately was not injured by that big smash <laughs> during, yes. during qualifying because he was having a very good lap. He was there to fight for pole position, for he pole position. So I think that he could be another another rider to, to watch. And yes, this experience uh, in Jerez this first weekend, it will be useful uh, for everyone. Let's say that Granado, I think that he, he has already found the perfection there, but I'm sure that someone else uh, could get much closer to that than they were uh, this weekend. So I hope for sure during, during, this, during this last um, weekend, we could see which are probably uh, the names that we need to follow at the top, uh, but probably the cards will be mixed again. Definitely. I, I expect it to be another exciting uh, weekend at Hareth. Michaela, thank you very much for your company and your insight. Uh, and thank you, Luis. I look forward to discussing Motui again with you next week. Yeah, me too.